why I think I fight. Do I enjoy it? No. Do I enjoy training? No. Do I enjoy cutting weight? No. Am I nervous? Yes. Do I think to myself, what am I doing? Yes. Completely. Unfortunately, it's one of those things you're either born with or you're not. And the only way I can explain it to try and make it make any sense is that if I'm not doing something which is either extremely difficult or extremely stressful, I'm in a perpetual state of crippling boredom. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. I believe that men have the divine imperative to become as capable, powerful, and competent as possible in this. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. That a man has the sacred duty to hold true to his word and do exactly what he says he will do. I believe that a man's life is difficult and that he has the sacred duty to become strong to handle such difficulty. It's going to be painful to get strong, painful to get rich, painful to become important. To be painful to become good with women, your heart is going to get broken a bunch of times. You have to be prepared for the pain. If you're not ready for pain, you're never going to be anything that, that matters. My kickboxing coach used to say to me, I used to come in the gym, say, what do you hate the most? And I said, I hate running. I said, okay, you're going running. He can say, why? He goes, because whatever you hate is what you need. I can't explain it. I see other people live their lives and they're like, oh, I can't wait for the weekend because I want to watch this movie. I think, who cares about a movie? You're looking forward to the weekend for a movie? Looking forward to the weekend to get drunk? Whatever you hate is what you need. I want to spar, bad work, pads, no problem. Running, I didn't want to run, but that's what you need. And that's what life's about. You're not going to be able to go through life avoiding pain and also becoming a man of quality. It is your duty to not be a fat piece of shit. But you it up. Smart work or intelligent work is something that most people use to hide and disguise their laziness. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're not a lazy individual, the first thing you do is you dedicate your entire life to work. Like I just said, every gym session I go to is work. Every car I drive is work. I'll film it. I'll use it. Whatever it is. Every single thing I do inside of my existence is work. Never miss a day and you never don't try and you're always on time. Was I late today? No. On time and you try and improve every aspect of your life, and you're a professional, and you try and make sure that you analyze your decisions, you give yourself feedback, you don't make mistakes, you're not lazy. If you try and you make it to the top, you end up elitist, because you look at the people down below and you're like, well, why didn't you try? I did. They know. I started lower than you and beat you. How are you poor? This is all, I had a bad, bad luck this, or I tried this, or I can't pull off that, blah, 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 blah. It's impossible to exist somewhere where you're not comfortable. If I were to say, lay on these red hot stones and you tried to do it, you'd get up and move because it hurts, it's not comfortable. You have to get out of that position. Yet, if you look at your lives, your life is in a shit position, but you still, you don't move. You don't do anything about it. So if it was really, truly uncomfortable to you, like those red hot stones were, you'd change something. It could be anyone I wanted you can be king of earth you have every single thing except for mind control you've the last missing piece and you can conquer the planet but the fact you refuse to change something shows that you're pretty comfortable where you are now of course you can talk a good talk all you might will sit there and go oh but i know my life's not in order i want to be rich and i want to be in shape and i want and i want and i'm gonna and i'm gonna and then you don't do anything which shows that you know how to talk the talk but you can't walk the walk when i was broke I couldn't sleep. And I say that, people laugh. I'm not joking. When I, I wanted money, like I needed air, I am smart enough to know that money equals freedom. And I don't want to live controlled by a job. I don't want to live controlled by a government. I don't want to live controlled by nobody. I want to be free. And people are sitting here now going, oh yeah, the economy's bad, but you know, maybe if we vote for this person. Three reasons you can't get rich in the world today, which is either you're stupid, you're lazy, or you're arrogant. And I find the most common one is lazy and arrogant. It's not stupid. There is nobody at home who is too stupid to become rich. Mm. I'm sure anyone watching this podcast right now, if you were to sit down next to me and I were to say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, you could do it. Of course you could. But you're too lazy to learn how to do it yourself. And you're too arrogant to listen. And you're too arrogant to listen. It's not about being stupid. You're lazy or arrogant. It's one of the two. Those are the two most common factors of people. So when I meet people who have truly failed, and they pretend to me that they didn't want to fail. I know they're one of the three. And it's usually arrogant. Because when I sit and say to them, you could have got out. They don't say, you're right, I could have got out, I didn't try. 
That shows humility. I needed money. And I used to sit there and just literally my hands in my head and people were like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I, I, I need money. I want money today. I would have been one of them cats that robbed a bank. If I didn't find money by the time I was 40, I would have walked in there with a shot gun. I'm not gonna live broke. Get rich or die trying. I understand that completely. I think the only thing that could stop me fighting is if I had enough money to constantly entertain myself. Unless I'm a billionaire, I need something that keeps me focused and keeps me occupied in life. With fighting, I have to train twice a day and I have to train hard. And the stress can the stress it brings in every aspect can replace fun. And my mind is occupied. It occupies me. It's the only way I can try and explain it. It occupies me. And I could never stop doing this even if I lost a hundred fights because I'm not built to live a normal existence. I can't do it. I couldn't just have a kid with some girl and sit at home and work a little bit and relax. I've never relaxed my entire life. I don't know what relaxing is. It's just not me. I'm where I belong. The top of the mountain. With a fucking Lambo, Bentley, Aston, five houses, six million liquid cash and 20 girlfriends. This is where I belong because I refuse to stay anywhere else. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place. Completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. It is trained like everything else in life. It is trained. So if you find yourself not appreciating what you have until it's gone, then you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to focus or concentrate on tasks, you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to go and dedicate yourself to something you don't want to do, you must blink and cure your brain. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. I'm 37, and I would argue that I've lived more life than most 100-year-old men. I've done everything, been everywhere. As a man, you should always live for something bigger than yourself. I feel like that the true masculine imperative is to find a battle worth fighting for. That's why men have always gone to war, and some men died. That's how it's always been for men. If I don't fight, if I'm not in a situation where I'm stressed or worried or concerned, I'm just perpetually bored. And boredom's crippling. If you're an intelligent person and you've got a good brain on your shoulders, you can't just sit there bored, you know? So most smart people take the academic route to avoid boredom. They learn, 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 learn. But that's never really interested me either. Although I've always been an intelligent guy and I've always done well academically, it, was, it never really interested me. And then I see people climb out Everest or jump off buildings or do base jumping or the guy who jumped from space. People think, what's he doing? He's crazy. I understand because some people can't live normal lives. Some people cannot just function nine to five office job, get drunk at the weekends. That is not for some individuals and it's not for me. The key is this as a man. This is the bottom, bottom, bottom line. Most men are not prepared to walk away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And if you're not prepared to walk away, you don't have any weapons. Exactly. If she knows no matter what, you won't leave, then what weapons do you have? Anything you say, shouting, screaming, yelling, go going out away for a few days, whatever. She knows you're going to come back. She, you have no weapons. The second, if, imagine a girl came to you and she said, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you cheat, no matter what, da -da -da, I will never, never leave. Right. Think of all the shit you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I do. Yeah. So this is the point. So as a man, if you're never prepared to walk away, you're never going to be respected. So how do you make women respect you? Well, first you have to be worthy of respect as an individual. There's no hack. If you're worthy of respect, you're worthy of respect. But secondly, you cannot allow blatant disrespect. So if you allow her to blatantly disrespect you and you tolerate that, then you're setting a precedent, which means, well, why would I respect this guy in the first place? Right. From the second you got together, you should have been a man. You can be, you haven't got to be an asshole. You haven't got to be aggressive. I'll sit with a girl and very politely say, look, if we're going to be in a relationship, if I'm going to take you serious, you're not going to have male friends. If you want to hang around with a whole bunch of men, then yes. I'm not going to take you serious. I lay it on them. Now, if they choose to keep all their male friends, then that means she's chosen these friendships over me, which means sooner or later she was going to cheat anyway. Like, how long until she jumps on a dude anyway? So why yeah. would I even be upset about it? These men have never been through any kind of emotional trauma. 
So the idea of breaking up with a woman is is big to them. I've 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 been through when you've been through real shit, a breakup just doesn't become that real anymore. You know, I've had people try to kill me. I have stab wounds. Tell me again about this girl who doesn't text you back. Like, who gives a shit? Like, there's, there's, be, like, there's people in Syria getting bombed. Yeah. You know, like, you have to get some perspective and just realize you're being, like, there's, there's real trauma out here in the world. Terrible things happen day after day. And here you are, alive and breathing and perfectly healthy, and you're going to cry over something. It's man up. So I have to find something which keeps me physically tired enough to stop me going AWOL. Um, and mentally tired enough, and I've chosen fighting because without this, when I'm not in training, I wake up every day and think, okay, what am I going to do today? It's 9 a.m. on a Tuesday, I'm bored, everyone's at work, I'm bored, and I'll end up doing something crazy. I'll either end up drunk or, or on the Eurostar, or, you know, it's just, it's just a random lifestyle because I'm constantly looking for never-ending entertainment, and it doesn't exist. As a man, your life shouldn't be about quantity, it should be about quality. Mm -hmm. The world can be a beautiful place when you're true to yourself. I really think that a lot of depression and a lot of sadness and a lot of discontentment with consciousness comes from the very simple fact that most men are not true to themselves. And when I say that, I mean, I want to do what I want to do. If I want to tell a man to, to go away in a less polite way, I'll do it. If I want to fire a member of staff, I'll fire them. On the spot, I don't care. I don't care because I know if I don't do what I want, oh, the resentment oh, inside of me eats away at me. And most men are living lives not doing what they want. Please understand, they don't get to talk to the girls they want to talk to because they're not important enough. They don't get to hang around with the guys as often as they want because they have to work a job they don't like doing. They don't get to tell their woman to be quiet because she'll leave him. He doesn't get to tell his boss to go away because he'll get fired. He just sits in his car, quiet and meek, filled with rage. And the best thing about being rich and important, and I guess the truest way to be happy as a man, is to be true to yourself, which is good and bad. I love my kids, I love my friends, I love the people around me, and if I don't like someone, I tell them to, and I say it right to their face, in their eye. And if they want to do something about it, it's up to them. And I'm prepared for that too. And I get to live true to my masculine imperatives in all ways. I don't have to sit and be fake, or lie, or get along, or keep it real. I keep it real! And that is why so many men are unhappy today. They don't get to keep it real. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line from being a masculine good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. You're, you're lazy. Oh, I did too. No, you didn't. That's a lot. The rocket is flying out towards the moon to escape the atmosphere. It doesn't pause halfway up the sky, does it? No, it keeps going. Every single second there are things happening, conversations happening that you're not watching information that could be the one little piece of information you need to break out it could be that one little sentence that changes everything because when you've come from the absolute bottom to the absolute top and you've done it all off of your own back and hard work and dedication and never missing a day the only shortcut to life is to never miss a day one because of comp compounding interest and two because sometimes you get lucky and you'll never miss a lucky day if you try every day if you don't try every day, you might miss your lucky day. And that's what people don't understand. If, I said, if you could build yourself like a character inside of a video game. Yes. And you didn't take, it didn't take any work, any effort, any years of pain, any mental, uh, any mental strength. You could just quickly just tick the assets. Yes. Nobody would choose to be weak over strong. Nobody would choose to be fat over thin. Nobody would choose to be a soy piece of shit. So when these people are soy piece of shit and pretend they want to be that, they don't. They just don't have enough mental power to stop themselves from being that. I can wake up sad, I can ache, I can have a, a busy day, stressed, etc. I will complete the same tasks as if I woke up in a fantastic mood. I'll do the same things, because how I feel has no bearing on the things I'm going to do with my day, because I have duty to myself and to my bloodline. Because I'm from a Luton council estate, and now I have all this money. But if I meet somebody who's truly broke, 
truly broke. I'm not talking about, you know, have hundreds of millions, but if I meet somebody who's broke, I think they're an idiot. And people are sitting here now going, oh yeah, the economy's bad, but you know, maybe if we vote for this person, who the are you going to vote for that's going to put money in your pocket? Actually, actually come along and say, here's money. Nobody. Still got to pay your council tax. Still a brokey. Nobody cares. No one you vote for is going to change it. It's going to get worse. It's going to continue. And you know the boat is going to sink and you're not panicking. In times, the chance of turning into anything more than a peasant when you were born a peasant was effectively zero unless there was chaos, unless there was a war or some great catastrophe, well, which allowed it. social mobility for you to go to war, win, get a knighthood for bravery, get some land and change your social mobility class. But there had to be war and chaos for you to escape because without the chaos, it's kind of like a prison break when all the rules are being adhered to and the prison is operating as it should, you're stuck in your cell. But if there's a prison riot, you have a chance to escape, but it ain't easy. It ain't going to be given to you on a plate. You're going to have to work. You're in competition with the entire world. Everyone wants to escape. You cannot be lazy. No more video games. No more loser antics. No more dumb shit. You are finally in the right place at the right time. You are the only person who can make this work. That's yeah. when you start being smart and efficient. But until all of your time is used, smart and efficient is a disguise for laziness. It's bogus, right? Fuck that off. You don't need to be smart or efficient. You need to work.